God is beginning something new in the life of certain people, but the Lord is showing us specifically those that have something to do with the month of April. April, the fourth month of the year. This is the token. The Lord is beginning a new thing. Starting from today, you begin to speak sign in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive that also in Jesus' name. James chapter 5. James chapter 5, verse 16. We want to continue our discourse on enlarge my coast, and this is part two. We began last week when we looked at breaking through barriers, and we said that not have our coast enlarged until we cannot have our coast enlarged until there is a breaking of barriers, until barriers are distorted and disrupted. Enlargement and increase become impossible. And that is why we looked at that last week and we prayed such prayers that we prayed. I want to counsel you to still revisit the message of last week. It's available on every three. You can listen and we listen and be blessed in Jesus' name. Now, today we want to look at the place of prayer in increase and enlargement. I did a teaching on the last two Sundays on certain things that are necessary for enlargement. You can also get that message. See our people, they will give you that message. It's on our WhatsApp platform chat. A few things. Thankfulness. Thanksgiving. That in order to experience enlargement, we must be thanksgiver. We said nothing dies in the hands of a thanksgiver. That everything multiplies. For how we multiply them, they will not be few. And we glorify them, they will not be small. Why? For out of them, Jeremiah 30 verse 19, shall proceed thanksgiving. That is the condition. When that is done, then how we multiply them. Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make many. When that voice of Mary and happiness and gladness is in their midst, leave the rest to me and we multiply them lavishly. And I see the Lord doing that for you, but you must cultivate the characteristic and the attitude of thanksgiving. Never be a complainer, even when you don't understand what the Lord is doing. Instead of complaining, give thanks that you are still alive. It is only those that are alive that can have money. It is only those that are alive that can have visa. It is only those that are alive that can marry, that can give birth. So if you are lacking in any of these blessings, instead of complaining, give thanks for the gift of life. And when you give thanks, just as Jesus gave thanks in the midst of five loaves and two pieces of fish, and there was multiplication to the point that over 5,000 men, women and children were fed, and there were left 12 baskets of fragments because of thanksgiving. Nothing good dies in your hands anymore. Yeah. Endeavor to cultivate the attitude of thanksgiving. And on Sunday, we look at cultivate only dissatisfaction. We said your problem is satisfied, your problem is contented with you as long as you are contented with that problem. Your problem is comfortable with you as long as you are comfortable with it. That situation, that mess, that condition is pleased with you as long as you are pleased with it. The moment you are dissatisfied with the status quo, then something new comes. We said it is dissatisfaction with the status quo that creates the new. When people are dissatisfied, we are not saying we should be ungrateful, but dissatisfaction is being, being content, yet contending, being grateful, yet knowing that there is more. So a only dissatisfaction with your current level is what gives back to an enlargement of that level into a new level. I will not have much time to go into all that again. Today, what is the place of prayer in increase and enlargement? And our case study today is the man called Jabez. James chapter 5, verse 16. Again, the Bible says, Confess your fault to one another and pray for one another 
the Juve be healed. This is where I'm going, the, the, the latter part. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You may not really understand the terminology used here, but when you read from NIV, I think I have NIV here, it says, the effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. If that is not clear enough, then the amplifier. I can still remember the amplifier. Do you have the amplifier there? The amplifier says, the heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available and it is dynamic in his walking. The heartfelt, continued. So it is heartfelt. It is not the kind of prayer you are praying and a missed call meander through your phone and you are checking your phone. No, that's not the prayer. It has to be heartfelt. It's not the kind of prayer you are praying and you are thinking about the food you are cooking. Your, your mind is off the environment. You have ascended into the realm of the beyond because it is heartfelt and not just heartfelt, continued. Remember the story of the man that came to knock the door of his friend at night. He knocked the door. The friend said, I cannot come down. I have, I have covered myself with clothes and the door is locked. But the Bible said, because of the persistence of the guy, as he began to knock, the guy said, oh my God. He had to come down from his bed. He had to, to remove the clothes and open the door and give him what he needed. When you persist, Matthew 7, 7, he, he that, he that asketh, receiveth, or say, he that asketh, receiveth, he that seeketh, findeth, and he that knocketh, knocketh, to knock, to knock means to keep at it until something happens. So the heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power. It takes power to change things on this planet. It takes power. There is a dimension of power that melts ice, ice block, to become vapor. It is not us ordinary wishful thinking that does that. It is not ordinary, I mean, ordinary science that explains that. It has to do with power from high temperature and pressure that melts it to become vapor. In the same way, your life can remain at the same level for years if there is no power. And power is only generated in the place of prayer. Follow me this morning. Our prayerlessness is the reason for our smallness. If you can pray, you can pray yourself into regions. You can pray yourself into territories. You can pray yourself into, into new dimensions and zones in the spirit and in physical. If you can pray, your possibilities become like God himself. God is unlimited. His possibilities are also unlimited. The possibilities of, of all are available to man on the wings of prayer. Why is prayer so important to a life? Prayer is so important to a life because the operation of the Spirit in a man's life is hinged and dependent on his prayer life. When you are not prayerful, your spirit man becomes very weak. And if your spirit man is very weak, the Holy Ghost is handicapped, even though he is in your life. Remember Mark chapter 4, Jesus was in the boat, yet there was this storm because he was asleep. Because that explains what happens in many lives today. Jesus, Holy Ghost, is in your life, but the Holy Ghost is handicapped. Why? They cannot pray. It takes prayer to push the engine, to jumpstart the engine of the Spirit in your life. The oppression of the spirit in a man's life is atmosphere dependent. And one of the atmospheres required is the atmosphere of prayer. Thank God for the atmosphere of worship. Wow. Thank God for the atmosphere of consecration and holiness. But if prayer is not atmospheric in your life, I'm not talking of the prayer we pray on Thursday and Sundays alone or any day of your services. I'm talking of the prayers that becomes atmospheric, that becomes Pray without ceasing, like you take in oxygen. Prayer, prayer like living. Prayer that you pray consciously and unconsciously. It is prayer that keeps the engine of the spirit moving. Not to be prayerful is to put the engine of the Holy Ghost in your life off. Is to switch off the ignition 
of the engine of the spirit. Anytime a man becomes prayerless, the Holy Ghost becomes handicapped. If you forget anything, don't forget that statement. Anytime I am prayerless, the Holy Ghost within me, that first John chapter 4, verse 4, that says, Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Talking about the Spirit of God, that Holy Ghost becomes handicapped when I am prayerless. But it becomes mighty. It becomes tremendous. It becomes awesome when I am prayerful. <laughs> Look at Jesus, the water man. Luke 9, verse 28. Luke 9. Let's learn from Jesus before we go to Jairus. Luke 9, verse 28. And it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James, three of them, and went up, not to a valley, to a mountain, to pray. Next verse. And as he prayed, not before he prayed, not even after he prayed, there are things that happen before people pray by mercy. There are things that happen after people have prayed, divine intervention. But there are things that happen in the course of prayer. The Bible says, and as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. Another person said his visage was mad, and his raiment, the coat he was wearing, became white and glistering. Look at the transformation. It started from within the spirit man. As you pray, the engine of the Holy Ghost is put in, 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 in starts. And when you start that engine, the engine begins to roll. You begin to rev the engine. And as no, no, go back, go back. And as you are revving the engine, there is motion, there is motion, there is speed, there is acceleration. Verse 29. And as he prayed, his spirit man began to radiate glory. The glory became so obvious, it came on his face, first of all. And from his face, there was a residual glory on his body. And it affected the clothes he was putting on. Who told you that your life cannot change? Do you just engage prayer, not complain. Many of the times, what people do is to complain. Lord, are you looking at me? September is going to an end. This is the second half of September, and you think you are there, and you are looking at me. Is that prayer? No, you are complaining. A kind of prayer that comes from the depth of your soul, the depth of your heart, that you know, and, it, and even the heavens know that you are praying. His countenance was altered, and his raiment became white and glistening. Another person says, like no laundry man could have white teeth there. They didn't use eyebrow. They didn't use any of those detergents or bleach or chick or whatever. It was glory that was the eyeball for those garments. Taxi. Look at the event. And behold, there talked with him two men which were Moses and Elias, the law and the prophet. These were people that lived in generations and centuries before him, but they came in glory. Moses came in glory, he saw him. Elijah, the man of fire, prophet of fire, came in glory. What does that suggest? When you begin to pray, there are several activities that begin to take place in your life. Nightmare ends naturally, and you begin to have visions of heavens, visions of power, visions of glory. Why? Your prayer life has ascended. Your spirit man must ascend also. And your experiences must not be that of the valley anymore. Somebody shout amen. amen. When people pray, listen to this. Prayer changes things, but not only things. Prayer also changes the man praying them. Jesus began to pray, and the Bible says he was transfigured. This is what we call transfiguration. Jesus became transfigured. There was a transfiguration, as it were, from caterpillar to butterfly, from the colorless, ugly caterpillar version of him to a butterfly version, colorful, winged like a fly. Caterpillar is, is bound on the floor, but look at butterfly, airborne. Your destiny becomes airborne from now. Yeah. But I'm praying for you that your prayer life become under fire, become yeah. on fire again in the name of Jesus Christ. Prayer brings supernatural experiences. 
It is in the place of prayer that you can you can encounter God. You can't encounter God just by just by reading. You can't encounter God just by coming to church. You encounter God in the place of prayer. There are introductions that God will do to you personally, like the encounter Moses at the burning bush, and he said, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. On this ground where you stand is a holy ground. You remove your shoes, and he began to lecture him. The lectures he never received in Egypt, he began to download to him at the burning bush. God is waiting to teach you some things about your life that you are yet to know, if only you can become a man of prayer. So a man today who is our case study called Jabez understood this fact that prayer does not just change things. It does not just bring blessing to my life. It does not just bring contrast to my life. It changes me, the person praying. Have you noticed that after hours of praying, when somebody abuses you, you can't fight. When somebody says, see your head, you can't respond because prayer has broken you. But look at after hours of eating and watching movies. When somebody says, look at your head, you give them 10 for one. You speak all, look at your nose, look at your mouth, look at your leg, look at your everything you give back. Why? Because you are carnal when you are not praying. You become spiritual when you are prayerful. So Jabez understood this. And that is why today we want to look at the prayer of Jabez. We can't finish it, we just take a first part. First Chronicles 4, verse 10. First Chronicles 4, verse 10. I'm, try, I'm tying it up to something this morning. Just follow me. First Chronicles 4, verse 10. In the preceding verses, we start from verse 1, but don't go there. The Bible began to chronicle the lives of the ancestors of Jabez in his father's house. It was so surprising that Jabez came from the lineage of Judah. The tribe of Judah, the tribe of royalty, the tribe of praise, the tribe of Shiloh, the tribe that Jesus Christ was going to come from. Jabez was from that tribe also, but there was nothing related to praise or shame in the life of Jabez. There was nothing about royalty in the life of Jabez. The Bible says Jabez was more, was more miserable than all his brethren. The one that the Bible wrote later was what happened after he had prayed. They began to give us chronicles. This one gave, gave back to this, gave back to this, gave back nothing of their achievement. That was the family he came out from. Maybe you are like that. Nothing to write home about in your family history. Nothing to write home about in your ascendant, I mean, in your, in your, in your, in your, in your family tree. But there is a God of Jabez. And the Bible says that let's call on the God of Israel. You will call on that God today. Saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. And enlarge my cause. Say number two. And that thy hand might be with me. Number three. And that thou wouldest keep me from evil that it might not grieve me. Four. And God granted him his prayer request. Which means, for God to answer any prayer, that means that man did not pray at this. And that is why the prayer of Jabez is a reference prayer to tomorrow. So I just want to look at the first line. They can't look at everything. The first line of the, of the prayer of Jabez. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. You will notice something here. The prayer began with an exclamation, oh, which means it is. it was heartfelt. It's not a prayer he thought of in memory. It was not a prayer he crammed from somewhere. He, he didn't read it from any prayer book. It came from the depth of his experiences, having assessed his life. He looked at his back. He looked at his today. And he said, for my tomorrow to be different, something must happen. Oh, God. It was an exclamation. It was a deep, a, 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 a deep exclamation from the depth of his soul. And he said, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. Here we see 
a very, very major cardinal point in the prayer of Jabez. Bless me. I know we have said a lot in churches today that we don't need to pray the prayer of bless me, bless me. Let's pray that God should bless others. But there, there comes a time in your life that your greatest, your greatest need will be that God will bless you. Jacob, in Genesis 28 and Genesis 32, how to fight with an angel, how to relay an angel, and what was his request? Bless me. If you don't bless me, I will not let you go. Bless me, bless me becomes a sin when that is the only thing you do every day. Even after you have been blessed, you still want more, you are still praying, bless me, bless me. That becomes, any, I mean, something else. But I don't see any of us that bless that much that we cannot pray, bless me. Because many generations are still hanging on your head. Many people's destiny are hanging on your shoulder. The more you are blessed, the better you become useful and relevant to them. Especially in Africa, in Nigeria, when the firstborn tribes, many people are holding on to him. If he's not well blessed, they are the ones that will pull him down. Because he's a rich man amongst many poor people. May the Lord give us now. Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed. What is the meaning of this? Bless me indeed is different from just bless me. Bless me indeed means let your let my life have the signature strength of your blessing. Indeed, indeed, truly. Let everyone who sees me knows that there is an authentic dimension. I'm not faking it to be real. There is something real upon my head. It is called the blessing. Give me Proverbs 10 22. Proverbs 10 22. So that you know this blessing cannot be faked. This blessing is not people just liking you. It's more than that. The blessing of the Lord, the Bible says, it maketh rich, and he added no sorrow with it. It's not the kind of blessing you have that you won't be able to sleep because of a covenant with one demon that must not catch you sleeping 12 to 1. One demon has instructed a native doctor to tell you, I'm going to give you money, but you must be awake. Watching for my signs, watching for my next move, watching for my next talking between 12 and 2 a.m. and compulsory you are on a vigil because you know the source of your wealth. But the Bible says the blessing of the Lord God most high makes rich, no doubt, and it adds no sorrow. God is not a God of trade by butter. He won't bless you and take away your marriage. He won't bless your ministry and take away your wife. He won't bless your children and make your wife mad. He won't bless you and give you diabetes in your health. No! God will bless you and make you all and complete. That is the blessing of God. It makes rich, complete, perfect. One thing, not an entire in his, in his operation. And adds no sorrow to it. Look at Genesis 26. Look at a man. But let's look at Genesis 13. Genesis 13. Abraham after God called him in Genesis 12. Look at what happened to him. Verse 2. Genesis 13, verse 2. The blessing of God can start a man. This is the point I'm trying to make it. From nothing and take him to prominence. You don't need... Ah, you don't need to start from the top. Anywhere the blessing catches you, it lifts you. Even if you're from a rich family, you may, you may have been rich, but there's no peace. It, it still catches you at that level and takes you up. Look at it. And Abraham was very rich in cattle, in silver and in gold. Why? Because the Lord has blessed him. Look at Genesis 26. Isaac 26, 13 to 14. The blessing of, the blessing of God does not leave any man the same. No. If he leaves you the same, it's not the blessing of God. The blessing of God is a permanent tattoo on a man's life. It is, you, you are it forever. You are, you are implicated by it forever. And the man, Isaac, works great. Look at this. When the blessing of God is upon your life, it must work great, not, not small. You will work great. The man was great and went forward, forward, forward. Not stagnant, not backward. There is a, there is a forward movement. Forward motion, acceleration, and grew the blessing.
blessing of God makes a man to grow. Until it became very great. This part. It became very great in this blessing. Something happened. The whole nation. For he had possession of flocks, possession of herds, and great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. A whole nation began to envy a man. In a short while from now, when the blessing of God comes upon you fully, a whole nation will envy you. I'm not talking of Shasha, Akumojo having you. I'm not talking of Akumojo having you. I'm talking of Ebeda, Ejalabada, Ikeja having you. I'm talking of the nation of Nigeria, the nation of the nation of South Africa. And those listening to me in any part of the world, the nation of Canada, the nation of US, having you. The Emirates, having you. Why? There is a mighty, powerful, and visible hand of God. Upon your life, he had possession of flocks, possession of herds, great store of servants, and the Philistines every day. Listen to this. What is the blessing? Is it just having more money in your account? No. Is it just having peace of mind? No. What is the blessing? The blessing is God's sign and mark of approval upon a man. This is my beloved son, a womb. I am well pleased. I have my stamp. I have rubber stamped in. This one is my pattern man. That was what he said concerning Jesus. Isaiah 51. Look unto Abraham, your father, and Sarah, your mother. I called him alone and I blessed him. Look at that. Isaiah 51 verse 2. Because when God lifts a man, there is something he does to that man. It's called a signature strength of his blessing. May that blessing not escape your head. For I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. This blessing is the mark of increase also upon a man. The blessing is God's grace and empowerment to do well in life. Listen to me. The blessing is the capacity to do well in life. In any field of endeavor, whether in business or in ministry, anywhere you find yourself in family life, you are just doing well. And people are wondering, how come you can maneuver every realm? It's because the blessing is upon you. And in your very field, you become a master there. Why? The blessing is upon you. Empowerment to do well. So that you may know the power of the blessing. Give me Genesis 27 as I begin to close. Genesis 27 from verse 37. Esau, by chance, just means the father's blessing. Isaac had finished pronouncing blessing on Jacob. You need to see the blessing that Isaac pronounced on Jacob. He provoked the blessing of the Jew. You know what is called the Jew? Even though it is raining or not raining, when you come out in the morning, look at look at the floor, look at the grass. There's a there's a droplet of liquid, right, of water on it. Whether it is raining or not raining, the dew is ever constant. It is called the blessing of the dew. And and Isaac stood in the office of Abraham the blessed and said, "I invoke upon you the blessing of the dew. Invoke the blessing of the corn. No matter how bad it is in the economy of the world." Jacob was not going to lack food. The blessing of the corn and the wheat is upon his head. But look at what happened to Esau when he began to cry for the blessing. Okay, thank you. And Isaac answered and said to Esau, Behold, I have made him, I have made Jacob the Lord. And his brethren have I given to him for thy servant, for servant. And with corn and wine I have sustained him. Look at the man sitting in one place. And making this bold statement, the blessing will make you to say something that is beyond your age. It is called the blessing. You become a man of praising in the class of God. Isaac, are you saying you are going to follow him to the house of Laban? I don't need to follow him. Something from me is following him. Are you saying you are going to follow that one to Canada? I don't need to follow him. Something from my head is upon his head. And, it, and that suffices for him. Look at what he's saying. And what shall I now do unto thee, my son? Esau, you are putting me in a tight corner. And Esau said unto his father, As thou art but one blessing, what kind of father are you? Is it only one blessing that is in your mouth? See, when you are the father, you never to twins. You should have two blessings. That was what he thought. My father, bless me now. Even me.
me also, oh my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Esau knew something. It is not by power. It is not by mind. But by my spirit. Romans 9 16. It is not of him that will and of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. It is the blessing that comes with mercy upon the man. That even in a strange land, you are shown mercy. May you obtain mercy today. Let's go back to where we are. 27 was 13. 2 39 now. And Isaac, his father, answered and said to him, Behold, your dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Trying to give him the same blessing. And of the dew of heaven from above, as 14. And by thy soul. Now, when he was giving Jacob, there was no mention of soul. But you now, you will have to labor. And by your soul, thou shall live. But look at the clause. You will still have to serve your brother. He is the original possessor of the blessing. You will still have to serve your brother. And it shall come to pass. If you can do it, when thou shalt have the dominion, you shall break his yoke from off thy neck. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father had blessed him. But Jacob, but Esau, your father has blessed you too. He knew that there is a great A blessing and there is a great D blessing. What he got was a great D. But thank you for the mercy of God. Blessing is so powerful. So in this morning service, we're not going to pray that much. I'm going to be standing in the office of my calling and invoking blessings upon you. And those blessings shall stick upon the Lord. Why is it a communion service? Why has God commanded a communion service? First Corinthians 10 verse 16. Why are we taking communion today? So that you will know it's not just tradition. We don't take communion on top Thursday. This is the first time. But why? Because of something that's about to happen. First Corinthians 10, 16. Look at this, look at this. The cup of blessing, which we bless. So the blessing can be can be poured in a cup. And as you take that cup, what are you taking? The blessing. Apart from the blessing that is invoked upon your head, family, and by the laying on of hands, there is a blessing that you can drink. Hmm. The cup of blessing, which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? So when you come to this table today, forget it's not tasty time. It's not unleavened bread. It is the cup of the blessing. Awareness will make you to know the potential of what you are. Be aware of what this thing carries. It is not just a cup of drink. It is not just tasty time. It is not just communion wine. The Bible calls it the cup of blessing. So let the sick here. The cup of blessing will bless your spirit, soul, and body. And every eating agenda of sickness will terminate your life untimely shall be terminated at this table. Let the one that has been called unlucky, unlucky, you are almost there, but you are not there. Almost testifying, but you are not testifying. The devil keeps pushing delay upon your life. As you partake of this table, the cup of the blessing will bring speed that will pick you from point A and land you at point Z by the blessing. The bread which we break, that bread you are going to pick up at the table. Is it not the communion of the body of Christ? The body of Christ was so blessed that it never saw decay. Every other person that was put in the grave out of decay, their bones were found after many years. Archaeologists all over the ages have tried to look for the bones of my master Jesus Christ. They couldn't find it. They couldn't. Why? On the third day, the King of Glory rose triumphant. His body did not even decay according to the psalmist, which I mean, according to the prophecy of the psalmist, that in preserved him, none of his bones was broken. You will not suffer that holy one to see corruption or his body to see decay. That prophecy came to pass, even in the grave. That is why I know no cancer, no disease can eat up your flesh because the body of Jesus has been engrafted into your system. You may not believe what I'm saying. But I'm telling you the facts from God's word. They may say in your aquatic realm, except it does not have blood running in his vein. That is, that is the only way it can escape from our from the from the from the punishment we are going to give him or his family. 
but they have made mistake. My blood has been transfused with the blood of Jesus Christ. Everyone that will trap me must trap who? Trap Jesus. My life is hidden in Christ. Paul said in Colossians, my life is hidden in Christ and Christ in God. So to catch me, you catch Christ. To catch Christ, you must trap God. Who can trap God? I want to open your understanding so that we know we are not joking here. We are not playing here. The power of the communion, the blessing in the cup. So as we partake of the communion this morning, I want your heart to be so set. I want you to be open for new things. The blessing of the communion also brings, remember when Abraham met, met, met that strange king of Salem. What's his name again? Melchizedek, thank you. Melchizedek, the king of Salem, the one who has no descent, who has no family, who has no trace, talking about the type of Jesus Christ. The Bible says Abraham gave him tithes of all. Melchizedek has come to pay my tithe. And as soon as he gave him tithes, get what? Get what Melchizedek gave back in return. He gave him bread and wine, the communion. And he said, Blessed be Abraham. The God of Abraham, the possessor of heaven and the earth. By that transaction, God willed the whole earth to Abraham. Abraham became the possessor, the possessor of the earth. What was God looking at when he gave the whole earth to Abraham? He meant it. That even the seed of Abraham in Islam today, they are still blessed. In Judaism, they are still blessed. And in Christianity, you and I, we are still blessed. If you've been to Dubai, if you've been to the Arabian countries, you will know the richness and the blessing of Abraham and they recognized it. I get to what I'm saying. If you've been to Jerusalem, you will know how they can grow crops in a desert where there is no water, where there is where the soil is very poor, yet they have the best yield of the world. If you study a little of 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 of, of awards, you will know most of the people that won the awards in the world, peace award, every of the award, Pulitzer Prize, they come from the Jewish tribe. Seven out of ten are Jewish people. Why? The blessing of Abraham. When he called him in Genesis 12 from verse 1, peace very fast, he said, I will make thy name great, and in thee shall all the families of the earth, as long as they, they attach themselves to you. Give me verse 2. I will make you, I will make you of a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3. I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curses thee, and in thee shall all the families. Listen, all the families need all the families. Who, many at times we think he's talking about only Christians. It's a lie. All the families of the earth shall be blessed. In America today, in America today, many, the, 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 many of their strong men are Jewish men. There's this man, is it Alan Greenspan, who became the advisor to the to, to, to four sitting president. The finance of US was, was under his control for many years. He was a Jewish man. Why? Indeed, shall all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And that blessing is this speaking to tomorrow. I pray for you today. May the blessing that stick from the Lord come upon your head. I say it again, the Lord bless you. So when, when you hear a man of God says, God bless you, don't make the mistake and say, God bless you too. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a demonstration of, of ignorance. Hebrews 7 verse 7, without contradiction, the blessed, the less is blessed by the greater. Assuming Melchizedek met Abraham and he said, Abraham, you are blessed. And he said, bless you too. What will that happen? You transfer the blessing back and it never stays on your head. When somebody says, God bless you and is sitting on a higher platform in the spirit, like your man of God, like your pastor, like your parent, what you have to do is amen. Lord bless you too. Don't get too familiar with this lingo. And without all contradiction, the less 
is blessed of the greater, of the better. I stand in the office of my calling in this service and I decree, listen to me, in blessing, you are blessed. Yeah. I've told you you are not going to pray much prayer point. Press your feet. Parabatu Shakavinas. Zetivan de Veratias to Baha. Kravina Pai, Kuan Misto Pai. Shuta Pai, Lakito Paraba. Zupelemino Pai, Genesis 27. Zipa Via, the blessing of Isaac to Jacob. Give that part to me. A man the man that protest in Valaka. Lift up your two hands forward, not straight them forward. I decree and I declare today that in the name that is upon all names, in blessing, you are blessed. Yeah. Even when the house is weeping, there are economic states that make the half. How much is a dollar to naira now? Is it five fifty? Six hundred today. Ah, oh. I think I thought it was five fifty last time. So it's increasing. Even when this earth upon which we are standing is crying, the Bible says, out of the house still comes food for the king and for the covenant. I decree, even when the heart is weeping, you shall lie. Like Isaac of old, I take my place in the midst of the patrons and I prophesy, the Lord that God will give you of the dew of heaven. Those of you that work with government, you understand what I'm talking about. There are people that are party, party members. They don't come to the office like you today. No, but on a regular basis, something enters the account, right? Because it's an allocation from APC. That's the ruling party in their party. Something enters. You may be in PDP and not enjoy it because you are not the ruling party. The Bible says there is something called the dream of heaven. And you say, God, oh, hear me. This is my son, Jacob. Give him his own portion. Give him of not everything. His own allocation. You have an allocation of the dew of heaven. Doesn't the Bible say the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament shows his handiwork? They are today, what are speaking? What are they saying? They are speaking something, but you have not understood their language. From today, I decree your own portion of the dew of heaven is in your hands. The fatness of the heart. Yeah. Your portion of the fatness of the heart. Yeah. This heart is still rich. No matter what the economy is saying, no matter what the fiscal policies are saying, the heart is still rich. There are blessings that are still underground. I profess hard. Underground blessing. Barely to blessing. They are coming out for your sake. Yeah. Your portion of the fatness of the heart. Your normal day of eating to fast. No, not you. Not you. Except by volition, by your own will. I just want to fast for three days. No food will cross my mouth. You decide so. But that God, because there is no food, and I still love you. I know you are trying to tell me to fast. It's a lie. It's not saying you fast. It's because you don't have food. That occasion that makes you to fast because there is no food is over. Serve you. <laughs> you don't understand. If there was a politician in this house, he will understand that meaning. He will know the meaning of that thing I've just said. If there is a CEO, he will know the meaning of let people serve you. When people serve you from the depth of their heart, your business can go to places. But when they revolt against you, have you not seen a school where everybody resigned the same day? And the proprietor that have been making noise, you can go and you can go and find up. When everybody is dropping letters, uh, 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 can't we play? Can somebody play with you again? No. When everybody in your company is resigning, it means this person is not there. But I said concerning you, people, people, great people, we serve you!
Lord will make you love over your brethren. It is what you say that becomes the law in your father's house from today. And let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. The blessing is a two-edged sword. Look at the two-edged. Look at the second edge now. Cursed be everyone that curses you. I'm not saying they should not gather in the night. For surely they shall gather together the Lord that he says another host. For everyone that gathers together for your sake, they shall fall. To any white garment church for them to invoke, invoke curses on your on your picture. Manapa, Rakwa, Parapia, Savia, Shepherdamina, Paul, Lavanda, Jopanakapina, Paul, Levania, Paul, Lenta, Ota, God Fire! Anyone invoking philatries, burning candles of many colors, pressing the sand to out you. Now put your hand on your head, your hand on your head. I prophesy, in this second half of September, to the rest of the months of the year, in 2021, the Lord will hear you in the day of your trouble. And the day of trouble will not come is a lie, it will come. But the difference is who hears you. If your enemies are the one hearing you, you are in trouble. For if God hears you, the Lord will arise like a mighty terrible one and he will deliver you. The Lord hear you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend you. He will send you help from Zion. Let's pass. He will defend you in the day of trouble. He will send you help from Zion. He will strengthen you out of his sanctuary. Give me the next one. He will remember all your offerings. Yeah. Everything you have ever done for the house of God. Many of you contributed for the rent. Many of you contributed for fuel. Many of you contributed for one thing or another. Many of you contributed for the welfare. Many of you gave to widows. Many of you gave to orphans. Many of you gave to people that you don't even know. I prophesy, all your offerings shall be remembered by the Lord. Yeah. All your bone sacrifice. That you think God has forgotten John. This one is born, this one is gone. He will recover them and remember them. He will grant you according to your own heart. Your desires for this year, 2021, no matter how long it takes, it will still come to pass. And he will fulfill all your counsel. That prayer request that I've been telling him in the secret, God will do it this season. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord your God, you will set up your banners. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will know that the Lord is your Savior. He will prove Himself from His holy heaven and He will save you by His right hand. In the name of Jesus Christ, I prophesy some trust in horses, some trust in chariots, but you, this season, will remember the 